All right, this is a solution for problem B, dungeon crawl. So the problem is that you are given a maze, which looks like a tree. It, it does not have any cycles in it. And you um, have several special rooms in this tree. You have a starting room, you have a key room, and then somewhere there's also a trap room. And you are expected to explore this maze uh, fully, which means you want to visit every room in the maze. The only restriction is that you have to visit the key room and pick up the key before you go into the trap, the trap room. And aside from that, you can go into the rooms in any order, but you have to visit all the rooms. And so um, if we first imagine this problem without the key and the trap, then you can imagine that um, you have to visit all of the, all of the rooms and you can, you can imagine a path that walks all, all around if you think of your starting point and your ending point, so imagine you were to end here, then optimally you would explore all subtrees here, and then as you walk towards this end point, you would explore all the subtrees there, and then all the subtrees and so on, as you walk towards the end point. But because when you explore a subtree, you have to return, that means that you are exploring those edges twice, which costs you, costs you time. So of course you don't want to do that any more than necessary. So as it turns out, your answer is going to be two times the total cost of all the edges minus co the cost of the path from S to E. So basically, without, the key, without considering the key or the trap, you just want to place E in, in the spot furthest from S. Now this would, wouldn't be too hard a problem to solve. The problem is that K and T mess this analysis up a little. Now, as I said before, you want to explore subtrees as you, as you go through, heading towards the end, the end room, wherever that is. The problem is that you, if you were to try to use this E here, you would pass the trap subtree, and you could not explore this subtree yet because you hadn't hit the key yet. So in fact, if you look at all of the edges that are between that are both on the path from S to K and on the path from K to T. If you look at these edges, these edges you will end up having to traverse three times. You will have to go from S to K, and then you'll have to go back to handle, to, to handle the trap subtree, and then you'll have to come back to, to, to E. Uh, the edges, so this edge, if, if you were to use this node as E, you wouldn't be doing this edge three times. But the point is just that these these edges are special. They now, in this analysis, these edges now count three times instead of only one time. And, and if you were thinking of it in terms of finding the longest path to a vertex E, you just have to think of it as negating the cost of all of these edges. In other words, they, instead of saving you time, they are actually costing you extra time to take these edges. So that is the trick. Um, this analysis is the beginning of the problem. The other half of the problem is that you have to do this efficiently because you have a lot of queries. And um, so it's not too bad to solve this problem in linear time per query. Uh, it still requires this analysis, but the rest of it isn't too bad. But in order to pass, you will need to solve it in this, in this runtime. You'll have to be able to efficiently process queries. And there are a lot of tricks. Uh, on tree problems like this to, to help optimize this. You can figure out common ancestors. You can cache common ancestors. For instance, if you have S and K, you would immediately know what the common ancestor of the two is. Um, the, there, are, there are actually several different approaches that end up with log n. Um, one, one you might do, for instance, is you can store hops of various lengths. You, um, as long as your hops can be can be of exponential length, then you will only take a log number of hops as you move up this tree. And you will have to pre-compute the cost of going into each of the subtrees along these hops. And similarly, you'll have to do that from here. The only difference is, the, the problem is you'll have to specially treat this. So you'll have to hop from here to here, specially treating these edges since they're the special edges. And then you'll have to hop from here to here. But all of this can be pre-computed, which allows you to get to this very difficult Q times log n time, and then you will solve the problem. For more from the ICPC World Finals DACA, follow us at news.icpc.global.
and on social media with our hashtag ICPCWFDACA.